Rhino, I'm Nina Fassion, the Executive Director of the International Rhino Foundation, or IRF. I would like to wish all of you a very happy World Rhino Day and bring you the highlights of our 2021 State of the Rhino Report. This year we're celebrating not only World Rhino Day, but IRF's 30th anniversary, and we would like to thank all of you for being our partners along this important journey. The global pandemic continues to have huge impact across the world. We hope that all of you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Our priority remains keeping our staff, partners, and rhinos safe, and we continue to focus on protection, monitoring, and following safety protocols. In India and Nepal, the population of greater one-horned rhinos has increased to more than 3,700 individuals. Strict protection by government authorities and forestry officials in India and Nepal has resulted in several years of poaching declines. In 2020, there were only two recorded poaching losses in India's state of Assam, which is the region with the largest greater one-horned rhino population. India Rhino Vision 2020, or IRV 2020, which began in 2005 for the purpose of restoring rhinos in Assam, came to a close earlier this year with its final operation, the translocation of two rhinos from Povatura Wildlife Sanctuary to Manas National Park. The goal of IRV 2020 was to increase the rhino population in Assam to 3,000 by establishing populations in new areas. The program successfully reestablished the new population in Manas National Park, which now numbers 47 individuals. Building on IRV 2020, a coalition of government, community partners, and nonprofit organizations, including IRF, are currently developing a new strategic program for India's rhinos to increase that population to 4,500 in the coming decade. The plan will be released later this year. To celebrate World Rhino Day, the government of Assam held a rhino horn burning ceremony. The horns were seized from poachers, smugglers, or extracted from dead animals over the last four decades and kept in government treasuries for safekeeping. Around 2,500 rhino horns, ivory, and body parts of other protected animals, not including those being held as evidence in pending court proceedings, were destroyed today. In some more good news, Nepal completed a new nationwide census for greater one-horned rhinos, and the population now stands at 752. That's an increase of 107 animals from the previous survey in 2015. The census was originally scheduled for 2020, but was delayed due to COVID-19. Protection continues to be a key focus for increasing greater one-horned populations. Additionally, habitat management, including the development of new areas and removal of invasive species, is absolutely necessary to increase food sources and the overall health of rhinos. With ongoing combined efforts, we can expect to see continued growth of existing greater one-horned rhino populations, as well as the potential to reintroduce rhinos to additional habitats they once called home. In Indonesia, we received good news on Javan rhinos this year. Indonesia's Ministry of Environment and Forestry announced four Javan rhino births in the first half of 2021, increasing the world's only remaining population of Javan rhinos to 75. The new births offset declines due to natural deaths for a small overall population increase from 74 animals last year. Javan rhinos are found only in Indonesia's Ujan Kulan National Park, where the population appears to be slowly growing. Ten years ago, there were fewer than 50 Javan rhinos in Ujan Kulan, but thanks to active and effective conservation efforts by the park, the rhino population has gradually increased, with at least one new calf recorded every year since 2012. IRF welcomes and celebrates these new job and rhino calves. The new births and continued population increase of this critically endangered species is the result of the commitment of the government of Indonesia and Ujang Kula National Park officials to protect job and rhinos and their habitat. In addition to protections, Ujang Kula National Park runs a comprehensive rhino monitoring program tracking every single individual job and rhino. This monitoring program, which is supported by IRF and our on-the-ground partner, Yayasan Badak Indonesia, or YABI, plays a critical role in the protection and management of this species and provides really important demographic data on the park's rhinos that can be used for population management. In time, the data will also guide decisions on which rhinos to move to a second site in order to reduce 
the species' risk of extinction from being all located at one site and allow for further population growth. In Sumatra and East Kalimantan, Indonesia, efforts to save the Sumatran rhino continue despite significant difficulties caused by the global pandemic. The dedicated individuals working to save Sumatran rhinos have continued their vital rhino conservation operations while facing some of the world's worst COVID infection rates. Indonesian officials, as well as local and international organizations, are also working together in an effort to capture and relocate Sumatran rhinos to conservation breeding facilities like the Sumatran Rhino Sanctuary, which was established in 1995 by IRF and Yabi. The goal is to increase rhino numbers and create a source population from which animals can eventually be reintroduced to the wild. Before that can happen, wild rhinos must be located for possible capture and transfer. Survey teams were established last year in three areas known to have rhino populations, Wycombis and Ganung Loser National Parks in Sumatra, and in East Kalimantan, a province on the island of Borneo where lone rhino has been sighted. Six individual rhinos are currently being tracked in these three regions with hopes that captures can begin later this year. A new sanctuary is also being constructed in Loser to facilitate conservation breeding in that region. Capture teams, which include veterinarians, transport experts, and others, conducted in-person training before the pandemic, but recent trainings have had to take place virtually. Local and international experts have participated, sharing best practices to safely capture and move rhinos. Under the leadership and guidance of the Government of Indonesia's Emergency Action Plan for Sumatran Rhinos, IRF has joined a coalition of organizations working to save the critically endangered Sumatran rhino. We must act now and utilize every tool in the toolbox to save this imperiled species. In Africa, the southern white rhino population is declining due to intense poaching pressure. The official current southern white rhino population estimate from IUCN's African Rhino Specialist Group remains at around 18,000, which represents a 12% decrease for this species in the past decade. In February of 2021, South African National Parks released a report indicating that the total white rhino population in Kruger National Park, the largest population of white rhinos in the world, had plummeted an alarming 67% from about 10,600 in 2011 to just over 3,500 individuals in 2019. After experiencing a decline in poaching in 2020, largely due to border closures and lockdowns as a result of COVID, white rhino poaching incidents are again on the rise. South Africa reported that poaching in the first half of 2021, though still below the number of deaths reported in the same period in 2019, are higher than they were last year. Authorities have also noted a rise in poaching figures in other areas of the country, possibly due to the lower number of rhinos found in Kruger National Park. Poachers are moving elsewhere. In a win for rangers and rhino conservation, the Skakuza Court, located in Kruger National Park and known as the Rhino Court because it handles so many poaching cases, was reopened in April this year. A decision by the South Africa Supreme Court thwarted efforts by some to permanently close Skakuza and move cases to a court farther away. Rangers can now once again testify against suspected poachers without extensive travel, and they can return to the field quicker to protect rhinos as soon as possible. Still recovering from devastating poaching losses since the 1970s, Africa's other species, the black rhino, has seen an encouraging population increase of 16 to 17% over the past decade. The population is now estimated at 5,630 individuals and is seen as stable and increasing, though still classified as critically endangered. In Zimbabwe, where IRF has a lot of program work, after an absence of nearly 30 years, black rhinos are back in Ganaraju National Park. To establish the new population, 29 rhinos were translocated in July of 2021 from Booby Valley Conservancy, Nalawangwe Wildlife Reserve, and Save Valley Conservancy to Ganaraju. The operation went extremely well and was a result of innovative conservation partnership between the Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority and the Frankfurt Zoological Society. IRF played a role supporting a feasibility study to assist in planning for this reintroduction 
and we provided funding to support these historic translocations. During the first half of 2021, Booby Valley Conservancy reported no poaching incidents and saw a more than 6% increase in the population as a result of several births. Poaching continues to decline in Zimbabwe after the 2019 crisis, which saw more than 200 rhinos poached, allowing the population here to recover and grow. In other rhino range countries in Africa, there's both cause for concern and some reasons to celebrate this year. Botswana continues to face severe poaching pressure on both black and white rhinos, resulting in really perilous decreases to their populations. The Botswana government is taking steps to combat the current crisis, including moving rhinos to safer locations. Work is also being done to disrupt trade routes and intercept horn shipments. In brighter news, Atosha National Park in Namibia now holds the world's largest black rhino population, and rhino numbers are increasing steadily under a well-established and innovative conservation and management program implemented by the government of Namibia. In Kenya, no rhinos were poached in 2020. This is the first zero poaching year in Kenya in 21 years. Throughout Africa, IRF has awarded more than $8 million in grants over the past 10 years to carefully selected parks and NGOs to strengthen security and anti-poaching efforts for key rhino populations and to reduce demand for rhino horn in consumer countries and shut down illegal trade networks. In research news, scientists working to bring back the functionally extinct northern white rhino announced that they have successfully created three additional embryos of the subspecies in July of 2021, bringing the total number of embryos to 12. They used eggs collected from Fatu, one of the last two remaining northern white rhinos, and sperm from two deceased males. A scientific consortium called BioRescue is leading this research with cooperation from the Kenyan government, and the eggs are being fertilized in a lab in Italy. Due to their advanced age, neither of the two remaining northern white rhinos are capable of carrying a calf to term, so a surrogate mother will be selected from a population of southern white rhinos if a viable embryo is developed. Labs across the world are conducting additional artificial reproduction technology, or ART, research in an effort to better understand its application of rhino conservation. IRF continues to monitor achievements in art with great interest. Any gains in the understanding of the science behind rhino breeding could prove extremely useful for these imperiled species. Finally, the past year has also seen success in wildlife crime investigations, with some large seizures of rhino horn and several high-profile arrests of suspected wildlife trade criminals by authorities in South Africa, India, and Vietnam. IRF and our partners continue ongoing training to help rangers and other law enforcement secure crime scenes, collect evidence, and provide testimony to convict wildlife criminals. In Vietnam, authorities have worked to secure longer sentences for wildlife criminals as a deterrent and have had some great successes. Demand for rhino horn destined for black markets remains a top threat to the survival of all rhinos. Continued coordination between countries for law enforcement is vital to breaking the hold of international criminal syndicates. Rhinos continue to face many threats from poaching, habitat loss, human encroachment, and fragmented populations that inhibit breeding. We must act today to ensure these important species survive. Let's continue to build on our successes with greater one-horned, black, and Javan rhinos and reverse the declines for Sumatran and white rhinos, working together to make sure rhinos thrive for future generations. You can view our full State of the Rhino Report at rhinos.org. Please enjoy today's activities and consider making a donation on World Rhino Day to support these efforts at rhinos.org slash donate. Thank you, Team Rhino. We are stronger together.